<laughs> Hi everyone. <coughs> Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a question, comment, thing. Sometimes I am pretty surprised at the amount of emails or personal messages or tweets that I will get asking me to not just recommend music in general, you know, that's not surprising. What's surprising is people will specifically ask for me to recommend to them depressing albums. I guess I'm surprised that, that a notable amount of people are interested in albums that, I don't know, either feature the artist being audibly depressed or an album that may sort of force those feelings upon them. Are you looking to kind of dabble in depression, sort of be a voyeur to it? Are you yourself depressed and are looking for an album to kind of heal that or to have some kind of, I guess, solace in that somebody else out there is feeling the same emotions that you are? I am curious as to where this kind of curiosity stems, I guess. Because while I do enjoy quite a few albums or artists who are considered to be very depressing, like Elliot Smith or even Bright Eyes, of, of course, as well, I feel like I enjoy them, especially Elliot Smith, for their musicality more than I do just simply their depression to just kind of label Elliot Smith or, or any of the artists that I'm going to name as just simply depressing music. I feel like it is a bit of an insult to how amazing of a songwriter Elliot was on his best records. And how he and, and a lot of these artists that I'm about to name were not only great when it came to writing music, but had a certain sound. So what makes for a depressing record, a depressing song? It's really all up to interpretation. For one, the neutral Milk Hotel album in the aeroplane over the sea hits me with strong feelings of depression and, and sadness because of its, its lyrical themes mostly dealing with ideas like death, and loss. Other artists really kind of <laughs> give me these downer feelings because of their their lyrics as well, but for different reasons, uh, especially Bright Eyes, who's, who's, who's. you'll find frontman Connor Oberst's lyrics to be extremely just straightforward yet poetic and very kind of self-loathing at times. And even like a, a hip-hop album or a folk album, anything that is kind of telling a real gritty story of, of things the way they are, whether it is a story about drug abuse or living an impoverished life or some kind of war injustice going on. I mean, that to me is is kind of dark and, and depressing too. You know, like Bright Eyes and like Elliot Smith, there are some people whose personalities in their songs just have such a sad and, and just dreary aura around them on some records, most definitely Nick Drake, Bonnie Prince Billy too. And then there are some rock bands whose lyrics, yeah, they do have a dark edge to them, but for the most part, it's their sound to me that, that brings the sadness, most notably Joy Division. Heading further into the sound direction, there are plenty of depressive black metal albums out there that, that definitely will <laughs> bring those feelings, no questions asked. And there are some artists whose very nihilistic approach to music and sound is, is definitely you know, not something that gets my blood pumping, that, that gets me really excited, really just kind of numbs my mind out and just makes me think, man, this is just messed up. Talking about sun, talking about wolf eyes, talking about suicide, have a nice life, swans, and, uh, you know, Godspeed, you black emperor too, I, I would say. But Godspeed, you know, is, is different in that Man, the heavy layers of instrumentation, it's just darkness and depression, orchestral style. Oh, and uh, Simon Joyner, gotta mention that guy. And Nick Cave. Nick Cave must be 
mentioned as well, and Scott Walker. And let's not forget about all that old school tear in your beer country, some really depressing songs and, and song subjects coming from the likes of Patsy Cline, Johnny Cash, hmm, Hank Williams. While depressing music can be kind of fantastic, you know, really be there at the right place, the right time, make you feel very reflective and, and introspective for a moment. Let's not forget to enjoy all those emotional flavors. This is just one piece of the puzzle. And like I said, it really kind of depends on you. What music to you is depressing? Really kind of is a downer to you? Let me know. Yeah. Anthony Fantano, depressing music forever.